He's known as the father of modern Chinese painting and the modern Chinese painting sage. He excelled at oil painting, traditional Chinese painting, sketch, calligraphy, and poetry. Many of his works are praised as epic masterpieces. He was the most internationally influential Chinese artist of the 20th century. He was also an art educator. The Western realism he advocated is still influencing Chinese artists. Some critics say there has been no leader like him in Chinese art circles since his death. His name is Xu Bei Han. On October 30th, 2011, Denver had its first snow of the year. That same day, Xu Bei Hong, pioneer of modern Chinese painting exhibition, opened at the Denver Art Museum. The handsome galloping horses and the freehand ink wash paintings convey the charm of traditional Chinese painting. The lifelike sketches and portraits show the painter's Western painting skills. Visitors to the exhibition marvel at this masterpiece. He开启了中国现代现实主义美术的一个先河。他是一个开宗立派的大人物。他在中国美术史上一定会有非常重的一页，他影响中国的美术的后代。He goes to the West and he sees all these interesting things in the West happening, and goes back to China and just fuses everything together, and that is wonderful to see. And I think that makes him a very important artist of the 20th century. Yi Jing in the southern part of China is a city famous for its pottery. The Tonghua River runs through it. Xu Bei Hong was born in this traditional courtyard-style house by the river in 1895. This style of building is characteristic of Southern China architecture. The inside of the house still remains in its original form. This attic used to be Xu Bei Hong's study in his childhood. His first teacher was his father, Xu Da Zhong. Influenced by his father, Xu Bei Hong developed an interest in painting and showed great talent even as a boy. Xu Da Zhong's child learning under a pine tree shows that Xu Bei Hong's father had a profound influence on him. Xu Bei Hong is a very large scale painter and a very deep painter. He was very deep in Chinese education, and he was very deep in Chinese education. Because he was born in the early days, he was born in the early days, and he was born in the early days. Only a few of the works Xu Bei Hong painted early in his life have survived. The subjects of Jing Jiang, and Go Jian's wife are kindness, righteousness, courteousness, wisdom, and faith, all valued by traditional Chinese culture. When he was 13 years old, he and his father left their hometown to build a new life elsewhere. They walked along the streets and kept each other company. In those unsettled years, for the first time, the young Xu Bei Hong saw the complicated outside world. Just painting, painting. That time, 
。我祖父就带到我父亲，就在街上帮人家画画。Xu Beihong developed an interest in the traditional Chinese art under the influence of his father. He also picked up Western painting that was spread among ordinary people. At the time, he had already gained some fame. Three years later, his father fell seriously ill and they had to return to their hometown. The burden of the whole family fell on the shoulders of 17-year-old Xu Beihong. To earn more money, he taught painting in three different schools in Yiching. Every day, he set out at daybreak. And because all three schools were more than 25 kilometers apart, he became a very fast and efficient walker. His father died the following year. Xu Beihong decided to try his luck in the outside world. In the early 20th century, Shanghai was a dazzling city, full of scenes of decadence. But this had nothing to do with Xu Beihong, who was from the countryside. After spending his last copper coin, the currency of this period, matters got even worse when a long-awaited job opportunity fell through, and he was at the end of his rope. It was then that good fortune came his way. The man in this portrait is Huang Zhenju. He was a rich merchant in Shanghai. He stumbled upon Xu Beihong's paintings and decided this young man was a rare talent. With his help, Xu Beihong lived a stable life. He finally didn't need to worry about his livelihood and could concentrate on painting and calligraphy. To express his gratitude to Huang Zhenju, Xu Beihong renamed himself Huang Fu, which means getting support from Huang. One year later, in the cold winter, Huang was on the edge of bankruptcy because his business was failing and could no longer support Xu. Driven to the wall, Xu Beihong drew a painting of horses and submitted it to the Shanghai Aesthetic Bookstore, hoping for it to be published. Shanghai的书店里面有一个名字,叫做《Shanghai的书店》。the Gao brothers decided to publish Xu Beihong's painting. They also offered him a generous contribution fee and asked him to paint four portraits of ladies. Xu Beihong was overjoyed and at the same time overwhelmed because he had only one week to finish four paintings with only five copper coins. Having no other choice, he pawned his cotton-padded jacket, and with the money he received, purchased pigment and paper. Every day, he alleviated his hunger with one piece of glutinous rice cake, which cost one copper coin. He was so hungry that he almost fainted several times. These are portraits of ladies Xu Beihong painted more than two decades later. They look serene and calm. It's hard to imagine the terrible situation Xu Beihong was in when he painted the portraits of ladies for the Gao brothers. As Xu Beihong was struggling to make a living, he received a university admission notice. 
this 21-year-old young man, who'd never received a formal education, was admitted into the French language department of the prestigious Aurora University in Shanghai. He had gone to Shanghai solely to realize his dream of painting. But why then did he apply for the French language department instead of a painting school? When Xu Bei Hong roamed the streets to sell paintings, he saw some examples of Western art. He also copied paintings of people and animals on snuff boxes. At the time, he had the idea of going to Western countries to learn painting. After arriving in Shanghai, he began to understand that he could only learn the authentic Western painting in France. So he planned to learn French in his spare time. This oil painting was created in 1924. The lady in it was called Jiong Bi Wei. At Aurora University, Xu got to know Professor Jiong Mei Sheng. Jiong appreciated his artistic talent and often invited him to his home. Xu Bei Hong caught the attention of Jiong Bi Wei, the second daughter of Jiang Mei Sheng. She was 18 years old at the time. The Jiang family was prestigious in Yi Qing. Jiang Bi Wei's parents were very strict with her. Though she adored Xu Bei Hong, she dared not to express her love. They often met each other, but they never talked to each other in private. Even when the two of them were left alone, they would try to avoid conversation. The subtle feeling she felt for him made the teenage girl both excited and worried because her parents had already betrothed her to another young man when she was 13 years old, and the wedding day was approaching. One day, Jiang Bi Wei suddenly received a letter from Xu Bei Hong. He wrote that through selling his paintings, he saved up enough money for his studies in France, and he would be leaving soon. In ancient China, marriages were arranged according to parents' wishes and a matchmaker's advice. This tradition lasted several thousand years. In fact, it was not broken until about 60 years ago. A hundred years ago, it took a lot of courage for a young couple in love to refuse arranged marriages to other people and to run away together. In the early morning of May 14, 1917, Xu Bei Hong put a crystal ring carved with the two characters Bi Wei onto the finger of Zhang Bi Wei. Then they boarded a ship and left Shanghai. In 1917, World War I was raging in Europe. With the spread of the flames of war, by May, the travel from Shanghai to Europe was completely disrupted. So Xu Bei Hong and Jiang Bi Wei changed their plans and went to Japan. They stayed in Japan for six months until they ran out of money and Xu Bei Hong's first overseas study came to an end. After returning to China, he decided to visit a man. This is a watercolor painting drawn using Western realistic painting techniques. A family is seen enjoying themselves in a traditional Chinese garden. 
Interestingly, this boy is wearing Western style clothes. This amiable man was Kong Yo Wei. Kong Yo Wei is who? He is the leader of the Qing dynasty. 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 There was an indissoluble bond between the young Xu Beihong and the famous Kong Yo Wei. When he was in university, his school often invited celebrities to give lectures. Xu Beihong first heard about the idea of reforming traditional Chinese painting in Kong Yo Wei's lecture. Kong thought that Chinese painting had deteriorated. It stuck to the old traditions and lacked innovation. He advocated learning from Western realism and combining it with Chinese painting techniques. Xu Beihong was deeply attracted by Kong's idea, and his realist paintings were appreciated by Kong. Kong showed Xu all the calligraphy works and paintings he had collected, and also asked Xu to draw a painting of his family. One month later, Xu Beihong went to Beijing with a letter of recommendation from Kong Yo Wei. Xu Beihong traveled to Beijing to seek an opportunity to study abroad. Recommended by Kong Yo Wei, he soon got the promise of sending him to study abroad with government funding. He was also recommended to work as a tutor in the Painting Methods Research Society at Peking University. Here, he displayed his outstanding talents. In the paper, Methods to Reform Chinese Painting, Xu Beihong wrote that we should protect the good traditions, inherit the ones on the verge of extinction, reform the defective ones, and remedy the deficiencies. We should also learn from Western painting and fuse it together with the Chinese painting. Ah,不足者，增之来增加它。不好的东西我们来改变它，重重新创新。哎，东西方的东西可以采纳的东西，我们兼容之。所以他到西方去，他很明确，中国艺术什么是好的，为什么要衰败到那些程度？他就要干什
in the Louvre, Xu Beihong marveled at the works of the neoclassic masters. He was enchanted by the revolutionary romanticism shown in those works and was deeply impressed by the epic and grand scenes and the realistic styles of those works. What he wanted to learn was this type of electrifying and inspiring fine art. Ban 他是要创造出中国的一种新的复兴起来的艺术。Rue Bonaparte on the left bank of the Seine in Paris has many galleries. In fact, it's known as the Gallery Street. Today, the École Nationale Supérieure des Beaux-Arts de Paris looks just like it did a century ago. Every corner of the antique and elegant campus is full of art. Entering the classrooms, you'll find that different from the traditional fine arts education with an emphasis on realism one century ago. Nowadays, its students prefer modern style. In the oil painting classroom, Almost all the paintings drawn by senior students are in modern styles. On the other side of the world, the China Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing still practices the same teaching methods used by the École Nationale Supérieure des Beaux-Arts de Paris a century ago. Figure drawing is a required course of all students it was Xu Beihong, the first director of this academy, who introduced sketching to China. As a student, Xu Beihong was so consumed with painting that he forgot all about eating and sleeping. Relying on his artistic gift and meticulousness, he quickly finished his plaster model sketching and figure drawing courses. These sketches show his excellent basic skills. These images look accurate and are true to life. Though they are just his classroom work, the artistic skills he used when painting them were flawless. After finishing the basic courses, Xu Beihong studied oil painting with Francois Fleming, who excelled at portrait painting. Later, he asked Pascal Danan Bovary, who was known as the last French master of the realist school, to be his teacher. Danan Bovary would become an important instructor in Xu's art career. At the age of 17, Danan Bovary began to learn from famous landscape painter Jean Baptiste Camille Corot. He abided by Corot's teachings of being sincere, confident, and never giving up truth his whole life. 
Chu Beihong respected Danan Bovere very much and went to his studio every weekend. His painting skills greatly improved. To be sincere, confident, and never giving up truth became his motto. In Xu Beihong's mind, the core of realism was truth. Paintings without an accurate image could not express feelings. One cannot paint an accurate image without careful observation of life. Therefore, he took every opportunity to observe life and draw from nature. These are paintings he created while he studied in France. They depict fragments of his life with Jiong Biwei, such as playing violin, reading, playing with the cat, and napping. The life depicted in these paintings is romantic and comfortable, but in reality, their life was very difficult. The Shu Beihong was funded by the government. Both he and Jiang lived on his allowance. China was in turmoil. Sometimes he couldn't get his allowance. In 1925, his allowance was completely cut off. During that period, they had to borrow money and move to low-cost countries in order to survive. In Paris, Chu Beihong and Jiang Biwei lived in an attic like this. Once they spent two months' allowance to repair a skylight broken by hail. Luckily, they pulled through with the support of their friends. Now when people appreciate these elegant paintings, they can hardly imagine that Xu Beihong painted them on an empty stomach in the Louvre. Due to the long-term hunger, Xu Beihong developed chronic stomach and digestive system illnesses. But even with them, it seemed that all his hard work was paying off. In 1923, his painting, Old Woman, was exhibited in the Salon des Artistes Francais. In 1924, Sound of the Flute, Housekeeper and His Horse won acclaim in the French art world. In 1927, nine of his works were selected for exhibition in the Salon des Artistes Francais. This was unprecedented in European art history. Xu Beihong took把西方油画这个画种子最基本的东西拿来了，就是他的造型和色彩，啊，这个体系，他基本拿到了，应该说是这样，所以他对中国的美油画教育起了十分重要的作用。Xu Beihong drew a self-portrait. He still looked unyielding and serious, but the expression on his face was calmer. He was 33 years old that year. This oil painting, titled The Foolish Old Man Who Removed the Mountains, is one of Xu Beihong's major works. It depicts an ancient Chinese fable there were two mountains in front of the foolish old man's house, preventing his family from leaving. So he decided to level them. Some people thought he was foolish and that this was an impossible job. But the foolish old man, who in fact wasn't so foolish at all, said, when I die, there will be my sons, who will have their sons and grandsons. Those grandsons will have their sons and grandsons, and so on to infinity. Why is it impossible to level the mountains? The story goes that God was so moved by the foolish old man's words that he leveled the mountains for him. The painting was completed in 1940, during what in China is called the Chinese People's War of Resistance against Japanese aggression. It's full of heroism. Through this picture, 
Xu Bei Hong expressed the Chinese people's unyielding spirit and perseverance. Xu Bei Hong studied in the West in order to bring change to Chinese paintings. After he finished his studies abroad and returned to China, he turned the brush in his hand into a weapon so that he could do his part to save the Chinese nation and its people. Many cultural celebrities once lived in these Western-style buildings. Chu Bei Hong and Jiang Bi Wei moved here on October 27, 1927. After eight bitter years with Xu, Jiang was very satisfied with the comfortable environment here. Previously, the National Central University in Nanjing had invited Xu Bei Hong to be a professor of its arts department and his salary was 300 silver dollars a month. After living a stable life for some time, Jiang Biwei began to worry. Every month, Chu Bei Hong spent about two weeks in Nanjing, and when he was in Shanghai, he was often away from home. Chu Bei Hong went to Nangoa Academy of Arts every day. He worked as the director of its Department of Fine Arts. One founder of the Nangoa Academy of Arts was Tian Han, a left-wing playwright. He'd been acquainted with Xu Bei Hong for a long time. They shared the same artistic dream and political views, so they became close friends. Tian invited Xu to teach in the academy, not long after Xu returned to China. China was in turmoil at the time. In 1928, the Japanese army committed the Jinan Massacre and killed nearly 10,000 Chinese soldiers and civilians. The whole country was in shock. Chu Bei Hong couldn't hold back his anger and began to create a large oil painting called Tian Hong and his 500 retainers. Tian Hung was a righteous man of ancient China. When his state was conquered, he had decided that he would rather cut off his head and have it sent to his enemy than surrender. His heroic death saved the lives of his 500 men. This oil painting depicts Tian Hung's farewell to his men. Tagamayoshi In the painting, the man in yellow was Xu Bei Hong. He not only painted himself as one of the retainers, but also included his family members, friends and students into this painting. While Xu Bei Hong devoted himself to teaching and painting, fights broke out within his family. Jiang Bi Wei had long been dissatisfied with his close relationship with left-wingers like Tian Han, when Tian Han was thrown into jail because of his revolutionary activities, and Xu Bei Hong did everything he could to rescue him, Jiang decided she couldn't stand it anymore. My 
把他们连你自己都保不住。Jung Bi Wei hired a car and came to Nangoa Academy of Arts. She took away all his painting tools and books and forced him to quit his job at the academy. Then they moved to Nanjing. This is Xu Bei Hong's former residence in Nanjing. The courtyard of this Western-style building used to be lively and was often full of guests. It's said that the cultural salons and celebrity parties held in Xu Beihong's mansion were famous in the upper class in Nanjing. Xu gave this beautiful building a special name, Dangerous Nest, which means they had to be prepared for danger in times of peace. Today, Southeast University in Nanjing is what used to be part of the campus of the National Central University. The art rooms where Xu Bei Hong taught painting were located here. Except for painting, he devoted most of his time to fine arts education. A large number of accomplished artists once studied in this building Xu Bei Hong was never a painter. Xu Bei Hong was a social worker. He mainly worked in In May 1933, after six years, Xu Bei Hong returned to Paris again. He visited his students and also brought a big gift for Europe, the exhibition of modern Chinese painting. The exhibition was a hit in Europe, and he continued to hold exhibition tours in Belgium, Germany, Britain, Italy, and the Soviet Union, winning high acclaim in all these countries. Major newspapers at the time praised Chu Bei Hong as the famous professor painting master and pioneer who introduced Chinese fine arts to Europe. Xu Bei Hong's art actually in a way bridged the two cultures. Uh, and probably he was the only artist, Chinese artist, that was able to bridge because of his study in Paris of the Western art, the techniques, uh, and then he merged it and then created his own style, which was more comprehensible to the Western audience. So he really was the, the leading master of that contemporary Chinese art movement. And, and he infused a both culture and created his own. After returning to China, Xu Beihong fully devoted himself to painting and created many masterpieces that had never been seen in China before. He was a pioneer in the creation of large-scale history painting. In 1931, his large-scale oil painting, Awaiting the Deliverer, once again shocked the painting circles. It depicts enslaved people waiting for a deliverer to rescue them. At the time, he turned his eyes to the toiling masses. Xu Bei Hong's paintings caused the authorities some alarm due to their explicit and dangerous nature. Some people warned Jiang Bi Wei that she should stop Xu from drawing these kinds of paintings because they were too explicit. But Xu Bei Hong ignored the warning. Xu Bei Hong, he has a relationship with him called "Who Can Stand Against Him?" He has a relationship with him in politics, in politics. He has a very strong opinion. Back then, 
the lights in Shu Bei Hong's studio didn't turn off until midnight because he completely devoted himself to painting. Outside his studio, guests regularly filled up the courtyard. There were dance parties that went on all through the night. Jiong Bi Wei enjoyed it, while Xu Bei Hong thought it was annoying. Then, like a blasting fuse, one of his paintings triggered the hidden crisis in their marriage. This painting was created by Xu Beihong in 1936. The young lady in it was Sun Duotsu, who was born into an eminent family. Well, she worked as the model of this painting. She could never have expected that she would be the reason for Xu Beihong's marriage crisis. At the age of 19, Sun Duotsu entered the arts department of National Central University. Her outstanding talent soon caught the attention of Xu Bei Hong, who then coached her in painting, showed her his studio, and painted portraits of her. Jiang Bi Wei saw the painting by accident. Her grievances and anger welled up. She did what she could to stop Xu Bei Hong from having contact with Sun. She also utilized all her connections to cross Sun's name off the list of students who would be sent abroad at the government's expense. Infuriated, Xu Bei Hong left Guangxi, and the affection between him and Jiang Bi Wei came to an end. At the time, the war of resistance against Japanese aggression broke out. In turmoil, the National Central University was moved to Chongqing. In 1937, in Chongqing, Xu Bei Hong drew the large Chinese painting, Chongqing People Gathering Water. It depicts the hard life of the people living by the Jialing River. He included himself in this painting. Though he looked like a scholar in the painting, he was also carrying water like the others. The expression in his eyes shows his deep sympathy for the people at the bottom of society. During the War of Resistance against Japanese aggression, Xu Bei Hong painted Put Down Your Whip, Roaring Lion, a foolish old man who removed the mountains, joined forces in Tokyo, and other encouraging works to promote the resistance against the Japanese aggression. He also held exhibitions in Southeast Asia and India to collect money for China's anti-Japanese war. In China, Xu Beihang is best known for drawing galloping horses. Chinese art aficionados consider him to be the premier horse painter in modern China. Xu Beihang, you know. Xu Beihang liked horses, and he drew a lot of them throughout his life. This one is one of his most famous paintings. The Chinese army was defeated in the Battle of Changsha in 1941. At that time, Xu was in Malaysia raising money for the war effort. Upon hearing the news, he was filled with worry and finished the galloping horse in just one night. Some scholars say Xu Beihang put all of his passion into this lonely, angry horse galloping into the wilderness. To Xu, it represented the Chinese nation. Through freehand brushwork techniques, he depicted the horse using heavy strokes of ink along with just a few lines. This painting technique was his own original creation. In 1943, while he was preparing for the founding of the China Academy of Art, 
Chu Bei Hong came to Guilin in Guangxi province to recruit librarians, and it was here that he met Liao Jinghuan. At the time, 19-year-old Liao Jinghuan from Hunan province came to Guangxi as a member of the anti-Japanese chorus. She saw a recruitment ad in the newspaper. She got full marks on the preliminary exam. On the second round exam, she was interviewed and hired by Xu Bei Hong. In the years to come, they would end up working together. In Liao's mind, Xu was a respectable teacher. She admired him for his struggling course and pursuit for art. She sympathized with him for his difficult and lonely life. Xu Bei Hong was attracted by this highly intelligent lady. Liao's meticulous care brought joy to the middle-aged Xu. The China Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing grew out of the National Beiping Art School. It's the highest educational institution producing fine arts talent in China. Today, they still use the same teaching method created by Xu Bei Hong. Sketching is the basic course for both oil painting and Chinese painting. On October 1st, 1949, Xu Bei Hong witnessed the birth of the People's Republic of China in Beiping. Six months later, on April 1st, 1950, the National Beiping Art School was renamed the China Central Academy of Fine Arts. Xu Bei Hong was its first director. In his 50s, he became very busy. He went to grassroots units, construction sites, and painted portraits of model workers and soldiers of the volunteer army. His oil painting, Chairman Mao Among the People, was also created in this period of time. When he came to find that his long-lost daughter had participated in the revolution, he was overjoyed. Xu Bei Hong devoted all his passion and energy to the new China's art course. And because he constantly overextended himself, he eventually became ill. On September 23, 1953, he suddenly collapsed with a cerebral hemorrhage while he was presiding over a meeting. He was immediately sent to Beijing Hospital for treatment. Three days later, at 2.52 a.m. on September 26, 1953, at 58 years old, Xu Bei Hong's heart stopped. Unfortunately, Xu Bei Hong only lived for 58 years. Following his wishes, his wife, Liao Jingwen, 
donated more than 1,200 of his works, as well as more than 1,200 works by other famous painters and calligraphers of the Tang, Sung, Yuang, Ming, and Qing dynasties, as well as modern China that he had collected, and more than 10,000 books, albums of paintings, and stone inscription rubbings to the nation.